I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell. Welcome to Rome, the eternal city, the city of St. Peter and St. Paul. And I ask you to join me as we continue on our Lenten pilgrimage. Today, we're going back once again to the great search of San Giovanni in Laterano, St. John in the Lateran. This is Palm Sunday, the day in which our Lord entered in great triumph into the city of Jerusalem, proclaiming himself to be the Messiah and revealing himself openly to the entire world, crying out when the various Pharisees in the area said, your disciples are proclaiming you to be the Messiah, he said, I tell you these very stones would cry out in joy. So on this special day, we go again to the great cathedral in the city of Rome. This particular cathedral of John Lateran is the official cathedral of the Holy Father. And this is of particular importance for us today because on Palm Sunday, when Christ reveals his messianic identity, he also reveals himself to be King of the Jews. John Lateran was the first great public church erected in Rome, marking the end of the persecution of the Christians. So in many ways, it symbolizes the triumph of Christianity, the triumph of Christ's kingship. Today, as we reflect upon his entrance into Jerusalem and the great glory as palms branches are cut all over the Catholic world and presented in homage to our Lord, let us go to the great cathedral in Rome. Let us go to the church of St. John Lateran. As you will recall, St. John Lateran was the first station for the first Sunday in Lent and solemnly inaugurated the Lenten season. It is therefore highly fitting that this great cathedral, the mother church of all the churches found throughout the Catholic world, is selected today to be the station which begins the Holy Week. It was a great tragedy that part of this facade and adjoining palace were damaged by a terrorist attack back in July of 1993. Pope John Paul II visited the site that very afternoon after the blast and described the work as a tragic act of barbarism. It has now, however, thankfully been fully restored to its original beauty. There are a number of things that we can take a look at in the church on this day. Off on the side in the piazza of St. John Lateran stands one of the oldest and tallest of the ancient obelisks in all of Rome. This obelisk, which was brought back from Egypt during the reign of Tutmos III and IV, was finally erected. This goes back 15 centuries before the birth of our Lord and stood in the ancient temple of Amun in Thebes. It is very possible that this obelisk might have been seen by Moses. It was eventually brought to Rome by the Emperor Constantius II in the year 357 AD and was at that time raised in the Circus Maximus, the site of so many Christian martyrdoms. Eventually it was left as a ruin and in 1587, it was found broken in three places, but it was eventually brought to this present site and erected by the great Franciscan building pope, Sixtus V. This was done in the year 1588. This new obelisk was now consecrated on the feast of St. Lawrence on the 10th of August, 1588. At this particular time, it is appropriate that we think about the Lateran Baptistry. The Baptistry has always had tremendous significance for the Roman people and dates back to the time of the Emperor Constantine. This Baptistry became so famous that countless other Baptistries built throughout the Christian West were designed in imitation of it. It was Pope Sixtus III, who reigned from 432 to 440, who restored it and transformed it. The interior has a magnificent colonnade of eight lovely porphyry columns that were taken from a neighboring imperial palace. At the center, we can see the basin, which back in its time was used for baptism by immersion. Millions of Romans were born to eternal life in this baptistry. This green basalt baptismal fault now stands in a basin with a deer along the side recalling Psalm 42, as the deer yearns for running water, so has my soul panted after thee, O Lord. 
all throughout this particular Lenten season, we have turned to the saints. As is customary, as part of the stational devotion, let us now pray together the great litany of saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Margaret Mary, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine, pray for us. Saint Teresa, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, save your people. From all evil, Lord, save your people. From every sin, Lord, save your people. From everlasting death, Lord, save your people. By your coming as man, Lord, save your people. By your death and rising to new life, Lord, save your people. By your gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, save your people. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church, Lord, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the clergy in faithful service, Lord, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in trust and peace, Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen us in your service, Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer.